I designed 250 pairs of shoes in 30 days, but it wasn't easy, so I asked my brother to help me. This was by far the most busy month in my entire year, and if I were to sum it up in one word, it would be disappointment. Everything began on November 5th when I was invited to an event to paint 160 pairs in five hours. I had never attended a bat mitzvah before, so didn't really know what to expect, but this one felt like it was taken straight out of a movie. The location was beautiful, on the lake with tons of vendors for food and a full bar for adults. There was even a swag station for guests to get customized hoodies and shirt bags, and we were located inside a custom massive shoebox. Now I've done plenty of live painting events before, but nothing quite like this. This one was massive in scale and super well planned out. So I definitely started to worry, how on earth was I gonna paint 160 pairs in under five hours? Granted, we were doing much simpler designs than I'm used to. For example, each of the guests were allowed to pick a couple colors along with a pattern, and then we would be freehand airbrushing those or stenciling them onto the shoes. So I buckled down, kept my head down for five hours straight and just pushed through. One of my team members would just constantly put a rotation of shoes right in front of me and I would basically never stop spraying with the airbrush. The sheer volume of everything was crazy. Working in front of people presents a lot of different challenges. Working in a crowded space while people are talking to you certainly isn't easy and people wanting their orders faster is no easy task. But the guests were amazed with the turnout and I was so excited. I've never been able to watch so many people be happy with my work all at once, which made this event very special for me. I usually spend all day in my studio, mostly by myself, so getting instant feedback is something that I think a lot of artists don't get to experience on the regular. And I think that most people had never seen something like this before at a bat mitzvah. So I think this just goes to show that you don't really know your limits until you try. I think that I would say it's kind of hard to really categorize myself as much of an overachiever, but at the same time, I do try to go a thousand percent above and beyond for every project that I'm working on. Especially on a month like this where I'm doing so many different shoes for so many different people, I want each pair to be unlike anything they've ever seen before. Especially because I know a lot of these guys have worked with different artists in the past, and I really want to be able to blow their minds with what I'm able to do. So I guess in a way that does make me want to overachieve. At the end of the day, I want to really perfect every single detail that goes into these shoes so that they no longer even look painted. They look like something that came out of a factory. One thing that I think not enough artists are talking about nowadays is really trying to compare your work. And I don't mean in a way that makes you feel worse about yourself, but in a way that will really push you and motivate you. Try to think of how does your work stack up against others and at the same time, are you willing to go back and do all of those little things that not everybody's gonna see, but will be noticed once somebody has your shoes in hand? I think trying to constantly think of that is something that's really pushed me a lot over the years. We are on to our second big project here. This is one where I was hired directly from the company or organization rather than through any of the players or the teams, anything like that. So this is for the Black Women's Health Imperative. I have six different pairs here, a couple sneakers for some former players. There's a pair here for OBJ, if you can see his logo there on the tongue. So that's always cool. But as you can tell by the design, it's just a huge burst, wide array of colors. And so that's what I'm gonna be doing here. And I really, really, really need to hopefully try to get these done. And I already spent a day yesterday laying down the stencils and base coating. I have no idea if I'll be able to, but it would be super helpful for me if I could get these done um, hopefully today, but I mean, it really depends how all the stencils laid down, how many touch-ups and things like that I gotta do. But anytime where I'm gonna be working on the same design across multiple pairs, that'll really speed me up. So hopefully I can try to fly through these. So just wrapped all of these up. It is Saturday now, about two o'clock. So I have about an hour till I need to get to UPS, drop these off for express shipping. And I had to shoot some photos of them up against the white background with the flashes. Told me they needed some photos for their website, so went ahead and knocked that out. All of them turned out pretty crazy and loud. It's definitely a lot faster when you're able to replicate the same design, so I was able to get them done in a pretty quickly, uh, timely manner, so that's good. 
my studio is an absolute mess. I can barely see the floor in here and pulling out more photo equipment is always fun. A while back, I received an email from a director at Wired asking if I would be interested in doing a large volume order to help celebrate their 30th anniversary. Everybody knows Wired magazine, so this definitely felt like an honor. I went through probably close to 100 mock-ups back and forth with them until everybody was finally happy with one. It was quite tough coming up with just the right theme that not only worked for the masses, but still captured the essence of the brand. Just wrapped up four out of the 29 pairs that I'm gonna be doing for Wired. And something that really stood out while doing these, although it ends up looking like a very simple design, at the end of the day, these can take you so much more time as you start to have a more trained eye when it comes to customizing sneakers and really trying to give them that factory look because all of the little details that don't stand out to you as much when you're just starting out, they become so much more prevalent as you start to have a more trained eye and you notice every single little thing. So it's not the overall bulk of the design that ends up taking a long time, it's going back and touching up every single little detail throughout so that it ends up looking like a factory design rather than something that's even custom painted at the end of the day. That's what takes so much longer. And um, as much as I wish I could tell you that I flew through these and got through them, they end up taking me so much more more time than I had originally planned for. I never really planned to be an artist. My entire life growing up, all I thought I wanted to do was to try to become an architect. That's what I studied in college, and I don't think that I would really say I was much of an artist growing up. But by the time I got to college, I did have to take some painting in various art classes, and at the same time I saw people online were painting shoes, so I said, you know what, let me go ahead and give this a try for myself. Right away, it just started to go well. People were asking me if I would be willing to do shoes for them, and it just started to really organically grow from there. I tried to really balance both for a while, all of my schoolwork and this fun little hobby that I picked up, but while I was at school, all I could think about was getting back to working on shoes, and anytime I was working on shoes, all of my schoolwork was the furthest thing from my mind. So after my third year, when I finally had an open summer, I decided to dedicate every day to it and see what would happen if I no longer treated it as a hobby and started to try to take it more serious. It really picked up from there and I knew that I didn't wanna go back to school that next year. And once I left, I knew that this was my only path. There was no going back. There was gonna be no failure. I had to make this work. I was of course scared to leave the path that I always thought I would be on. Scared to tell my parents that I was ready to leave school. Scared to tell all of my other close friends and family. I mean, what on earth are they gonna think about this? And at the time, there wasn't really someone you could point to and say, I wanna be a professional artist just like him. Look at the path that he's carved out and how long he's been doing this. It wasn't a safe bet by any means. This is actually my sixth season collaborating with the Jaguars. I feel like that I've been there and done that and know just about what to expect from working with the players. I was slated to do 31 pairs for them this time around. I started all of my work on the cleats for them on November 6th with the initial deadline of November 20th. However, since this was a huge amount of pairs, I asked if we could extend the deadline by a day or so for half of the pairs. There's so many people involved with the My Cause My Cleats project that at some point, everybody is counting on you to deliver the shoes in time, which is a lot of pressure. I was able to get that first batch sent out on time for Monday delivery, but the next portion is where I really ran into some trouble. I got a bad feeling about this. And we didn't make it. So despite working around the clock for days, that 6.30 deadline today came very, very fast. And uh, by the time I actually got everything packaged up, arrived to UPS, it was close to 7.30. I was praying for a miracle that the last truck hadn't been out quite yet, but unfortunately we were about an hour late. And being an hour late on a project that you've spent working on for two weeks is just a total kick in the gut. Now, basically, the rest of those pairs will arrive a day late, and uh, essentially all of their media team and everybody waiting on these will be a day behind. And 
like I said, there's a, a lot of people involved in this. There's this entire media team that's waiting to shoot pictures and videos, schedule interviews with the players to talk about the cleats and things like that. So it's a very unfortunate position to not deliver on your word of when you say you're going to have something done. I, I feel like I, I let myself down and um, this feels like a, a breaking point of I cannot let this happen again. I have to do something different. It's very difficult to strike the perfect balance of creating something that is unique, detailed, and creative enough that it stands out, while also being simplistic enough that you can get through all of these pairs. I feel like I not only let myself down, but I also let down a team that's trusted me in the past. If they ultimately decided not to work with me next year, it's nobody's fault but my own. I hope they do, but I still have to learn from this. Sports have always been a massive part of my life. Growing up, I watched and played just about everything imaginable with my dad, and it's definitely something that we've always bonded over. So when I got into customizing and I saw more people were starting to work with athletes, I knew that that was something I definitely wanted to try and do. Not only would it be cool to connect with the athletes, but I could then tell all of my friends and family, hey, make sure you have your eyes peeled on this game and try to check out the shoes that I made. So it was definitely a dream come true for somebody who's always been a fan. Now with my son, I do a lot of those same things that my dad did when it comes to watching and playing sports. And I love to joke around with him when we're watching a game and we might just so happen to catch a pair that I painted. And I say, do you remember you helped me work on those? And it's something that he just gets so hyped about. It always hits close to home and it's easily one of the coolest parts of this entire business. This is also my sixth year working with the Bears as well. I'm always excited to work with my hometown team and that is just such an honor and privilege. I really needed to redeem myself after failing to hit the deadline with the Jaguars. I knew that in order to complete this project in time, I had to ask for help. Describe this year's workload in one word. This time around, it was also crucial that I tried to make the design simpler wherever I could. In order to maximize my efficiency, it was vital that I did all of the airbrushing at the same time, all of the stenciling at once, and all of the untaping had to be done together. We had just over a week and a half to get through this project, which was another 30 pairs. So I've got Justin Fields' cleats right here that I'm working on. He's going to be representing his foundation. And this is definitely one of those try to stop and smell the roses moments that I get to work on the cleats for the quarterback of the team that I grew up rooting for. I get to watch the guy under center throw on a, a pair of cleats that I worked on. That is something that I will try to never take for granted when it comes to all of this. All right, this is always a bittersweet moment when it is finally time to pack them up and get them up on out of here. A couple years ago, we put out a, a My Cause, My Cleats video, and I talked about how I got started doing this and sort of how you can too. And it's been really cool over the last couple years to see you guys and other artists hit me up and say, hey, I saw this video, I followed some of these steps. I got my first player, I got my first team, and I'm so stoked to see my work finally hit the field. That is a, a feeling I know that uh, is so special to me. And it's really cool to see other people be able to accomplish that goal as well. And I uh, really appreciate you guys tuning in. So until next time, everybody get out there and just create.